Good morning everyone and welcome to St James on this the fourth Sunday of Easter. I'm Reverend Judith Ramble and will be leading the service. We also welcome the Venerable Simon Heathfield, our Archdeacon, to preach this morning. This service is pre-recorded and published online because we remain committed to the safety of everybody as lockdown eases. Now shortly after this service we will be meeting at 11am for the annual parish church meeting. I'm delighted to say that Simon will be joining us there also. The Zoom call details are in the text accompanying this video and on screen. Only those on the electoral roll are eligible to vote, but all are welcome. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Let us sing our opening hymn, Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing.
pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's hear our Lord's blessing. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In baptism we died with Christ so that, as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join together to sing the Peruvian Gloria. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To him be glory forever, to him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To Him be glory forever, to Him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To Him be glory forever, to Him be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. The collective special prayer for today. Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in Him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above where he reigns with him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> and together we say the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. New Testament reading today is read by our warden, John Winterbottom. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 4. The next day their rulers, elders and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power, or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, it has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, John. Our Gospel reading today is read by our other church warden, Renny Samuel. Thank you so much, Renny. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. Really good to see you this morning. Thanks for joining us for worship. We're going to pray and then um, think about Acts chapter 4. Our Father God, we thank you for the gift of each other. We remember all those in need across our community. But at this moment, we remember the need of our own hearts and ask that by the power of your spirit, you would bring us hope and insight, wisdom and understanding for the common good of ourselves and all whom we serve. Amen. So this morning, where is the power? It's a question that comes from our deepest yearnings, lament, despair, suspicion, curiosity, jealousy and more. If you've got it, I want it. 
Where is the power? It includes the sublime to the ridiculous, doesn't it? The inevitable yearly swearing at the Christmas tree lights failing to the cold darkness of a war-torn land whose energy grid has become the target. Where is the power? It's present in every place where humans gather. International conferences, national governments, institutions and organisations, businesses, charities, schools, churches, amongst friends and neighbours, across congregations, home groups, and even in PCCs and their AGMs. Where is the power? It's always present, always powerful, always privileging and excluding, affecting everyone, everywhere, all the time. It's not a question for tin pot regimes halfway around the world, or, or for the great and the good, or for those who choose to pick up the stone or the gun. It's for all of us, for you and me. So we need an answer to its insistent drumbeat, where is the power? And over 2,000 years ago, in a far-flung part of an ancient empire, exactly the same question was asked of Jesus and his followers. Because they knew that the power would be either for them or against them, to enrich or impoverish them, to exalt or destroy. And so the powers that be wanted to know, where is the power that these people have and that Jesus has? Where is the power? And that question calls us to follow and pay attention. But I hear you cry, not where's the power, but I got old chap, that's not very Church of England, is it? Don't get your knickers in a twist, it's just a group of us serving, trying to make a little difference. It's not like John Cleese and the People's Liberation Front. But where is the power? I mean, honestly, we have enough trouble remembering to bring the biscuits. As ever, humour, bluster, banter, the old British way. Whether on the lips of the Prime Minister or a playground taunt is often a cover for keeping or grabbing power. Minimise it, distract it, laugh of it and take it. And all would be well. The drumbeat carries on though. Where is the power? Because wherever human activity occurs, there are issues of power in Whitehall or Mere Green International Summits or your church AGM. If you don't believe me, I shall say to you one word, Hanforth, well maybe three, Hanforth Parish Council. I rest my case, we can go home. Well, just in case you didn't see this viral internet phenomenon, Hanforth Parish Council is a lovely place in Cheshire uh, with well-meaning retirees who give their energies free to make it a great place to live. Yet their parish council recorded on Zoom turned into a viral hit for many. You have no authority here, claimed one man very powerfully. Another one slightly bizarrely saying, call me Britney Spears. Shouting, sarcasm, insult, claim and counterclaim. It reminded me of my PCC in London sometimes. But in the end, one Jackie Weaver, the clerk, has emerged as a modern day hero, wielding that which has become the ultimate power in the pandemic world. First of all, at the press of a button, as some of you may already have done, she mutes them and they fall silent. And secondly, she just kicks them out of the meeting and millions cheer at the instant power. Power in its raw state, you see, does not need an army or a position. It doesn't need anything other than an insistent voice or passive aggressive silence playing on the ignorance and fear of the listener and seeking to bolster the position and privilege of the speaker. Acts 4 reminds us of a true fact throughout history. The issue is not, is there any power here? Issue is only who has the power and what are they doing with it? And if that's you today, have a think. <laughs> because if it's not the person asking the question, it will be someone else. And here we see Sadducees and priests and the captain of the temple guard, they were all asking the question. Now, they, they might not have had Zoom in those days, but they typified a rather grubby alliance of middle ranking locals who had a vested interest in power. Power over the people brought them tax receipts as a cut from the Romans or stuff they never even told the Romans about. Power ensured that their families and households would survive and flourish. Power would assure them of a legacy, or at least a little plaque under the pulpit, maybe. Power over the people brought the stability within which the racket, the religious abuse, 
the personal vendettas and the petty things can thrive. Power makes nobodies stumble. So where's the power in your room today? Maybe you're joining us from home and you've benefited from the power of love. That's great. Rejoice in it, cherish it, give it. Sadly, in the pandemic, we've seen an explosion in domestic abuse. Stay home, stay safe is a cruel irony when we have a 70% rise in calls uh, for help during lockdown. It includes everyone, not just women. It stretches right across the age ranges, not just the young. And yes, it takes place in the city and deprived areas, but I'm absolutely certain there's a lot of it here in Maybury. The power that looks can be broken. If as you're listening to this, you're feeling unsafe or abused, reach out to someone, phone church. It's not your fault. You do not deserve it. People can help. But what about the other room today, the house of God? Every church, like the first Christians, faces issues of power. Where's the power in the room at St. James today? In one sense, your community is a roll call of amazing people, astonishing public service leaders in business and education. And a bit like Hanforth, an astonishing energetic retiree community who make it a great place to live. So Jerusalem says to Mayor Green today, where is the power? In England, we're often uneasy about talking about power, but it's still there. I grew up in a wonderful church of two to three hundred people in another royal borough uh, a couple of hundred miles to the south of here. But when it came to power, it was jolly clear. It resided in about six established local families, none of whom included the vicar. Well, it was all great and, uh, until the latest cleric disagreed with them. And as soon as they did so, it was difficult. It was started with nicknaming. A subtle abuse of unchristian power. I actually thought Jeff the Red, as he came to be known, was the very best figure it, they'd ever had. But after a while, you knew where and with whom the power was. Of course, it worked both ways. Vicars are often wrong. Clergy are profoundly mistaken and stupid sometimes, including archdeacons. Many of those families have poured their time and resources, prayers and love into not just the building, but pastoral care, relationships and much more. Best vicars recognise both of those things and challenge them. They recognised the vision and passion that each party had and directed them for good. They were humble enough to be led as well as to lead. And the best members of the church did the same, always seeking the best, encouraging with love, never speaking against, seeking to make their leader's life a joy, respecting, supporting, loving. But they did one more thing, and it's the last thing I want to say. They answered Jerusalem's question, with Jerusalem's power, with Jerusalem's answer. What ensured the first disciples of my church to weather the storms was when Jerusalem asked, where's the power? The disciples spoke as one in the resurrection of Jesus. And in the shortest evangelical sermon on record in verses eight to 12, an unschooled, untrained, unordained fisherman says, it's in Jesus, that's where the power is. He's alive, healing people, saving people. Jerusalem's answer is always the resurrection. So your issues today is not whether there's any power in St. James or whether it disappears with Daniel and Julius up the motorway to Manchester. No, no, no. It always has and always will be here. Where is it? Who has it? And is it about them or about the resurrection? I always think the test of good PCC members is not so much where they are in a skills matrix, although they do need skills and do pray for them. But are they a, a resurrection person? Does it just seep out of them? You can tell it from their joy, their love, their humility, their sacrifice, their compassion. They want to share the life of Jesus. And it confused the heck out of the people around the first disciples. It's not about perfection. It's about progress. So if you're standing for PCC, thank you. But please hear Jerusalem's question this morning and resolve that you will only use the resurrection power of Jesus not the power of our own agendas, and we all have them, me included, are in privilege or history. Those things aren't wrong, but friends, we have to let them die at the cross and be reborn in the resurrection. And if, like me, you recently had a birthday and are heading north of 50, well, take delight in verse 22 and discover that they thought it was amazing that healing could come to a 40 year old, so there's good news for you and me. Where's the power here? 
And will the AGM be full of resurrection life? And if we needed another reminder this week, I can't continue without saying we are painfully examining the whole church in our report on racism in the church. And whatever the situation in your parish, please let me be clear, it is not, not your problem. It is all of our problems wherever we are. And in fact, the argument in Acts 4 takes us there again because that was about race. Did you notice how everyone was put in a tribe or a group separate from each other? The resurrection power in Jerusalem was very much about hearing the conflicted cry for racial justice and meeting it with the only thing that can cross those lines. One of the great privileges in Mere Green and in our super diverse city is that you're not monochrome. My childhood church was. But friends, we have to admit that many of us are still blind to the ways in which we sort of think people should act, speak, work, think, pray or serve like me, to belong with me. And I know for myself that such attitudes are more often the outcrop of persistent racism. You're not immune from such things. We still often draw the line of power with the newcomers on one side of it and us on the other where the power is. Even in the pandemic, we've seen devastating rates of exclusion leading to different rates of suffering and death. Complex, yes. Nuanced, yes. Not fully understood, yes. But friends, I believe structural racism, all the same. We have a journey to go on, so do join us, not in denying, but repenting. Not in condemning, but growing. Not in ignoring, but listening. Not in patronising, but empowering all people. I think you could have a really interesting conversation in Mere Green by listening closely and unconditionally and humbly to the actual lived experiences of our UK minority ethnic and global majority members in this church and community. Don't rush. It will need care and safety, I can assure you, love and thought if people are to speak truly and be heard properly. You will probably be saddened and surprised in equal measure but my friends, the truth will set you free. As we approach the AGM and think about leadership and votes, prayers and support, your past and future, this scripture today is relevant. Power, resurrection, racial justice are part of God's stream of hope, not just for the world and the Church of England, but for Mere Green, your neighbours, your heart and mine. So please ask and know today, where is the power? But resolve together that the only power worth having is the resurrection power in the name of Jesus. Not personal agendas or established privilege. Just because it's always been doesn't make it right or so forever. The amazing thing is when you turn to resurrection power, the impossible becomes possible. The excluded become included and the church when it becomes not just the earthly Jerusalem, but the heavenly Jerusalem. Where is the power of the morning? Friends, it's actually in your hands. The only question is where you will get it from and what you will do with it. And in those things, may God stretch your imagination, enlarge your heart, and amaze you and this community with all that he does. Amen. Thank you, Simon, for your reflections. Let us join together as one family and sing our creed song. We believe in God, our Father. like a mother and he sent us Christ our brother above him there is no other we believe in God our father and in Christ who sets us free we believe in the Holy Spirit blessed Trinity Christ our 
Savior, God with us to show us love, died a shameful death to save us, now he sits enthroned above. You can come to him whenever, his forgiveness failing never, our great shepherd king forever, we believe in God our Father. Sets us free. We believe in the Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity. We believe the Holy Spirit is our comforter and guide. Though we walk in fearful darkness, still we have this inside joy love gentleness and kindness self-control peace patience goodness adding faithfulness to all this we believe in god our father and in christ who sets us free we believe in the holy spirit blessed trinity our Father, God who made us, His Son who came down to save us, the Spirit who sustains us, the Holy Three in one. Our Father, God who made us, His Son who came down to save us, the Spirit who sustains us, the Holy Three. We pray together as a church now, led by Tony Platts, our retired priest. As we prepare to come together in prayer, I ask you to take a moment to relax and focus on our grateful petitions, of our needs and the gratefulness to our Father God. The response will be, Lord, in your mercy. And you are to respond by saying, here is our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father God, as we've just celebrated Easter and all that that can mean for each of us through the sacrifice and the death of Jesus, so we give you thanks for your love and grace revealed and given to all who turn to you in faith. So Father God, we give you thanks for this new day and open our hearts to recognise and feel your presence and grace and love as we worship together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, that despite the many difficult problems that many still find ourselves in, we can confidently share you with each other in prayer or the decoration of hymns. Through listening and singing, we can be in church or at home on a computer, knowing that you are always with us through Jesus and through your Holy Spirit. We give you thanks for those here at St James who have given their time and help to enable us to worship together in spite of the various difficulties on the way to achieving it. Lord God, we pray for the leaders, the clergy and the members of all Christian denominations of churches across our country who have ensured that worship and teaching can still be accessed by congregations and discovered by those for the first time that they might be inspired to search for faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we take this time to remember before you those in our country and those around the world who have suffered or who are still suffering from the results of coronavirus and for those who lack any help or treatment. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and we thank you, Lord, for those who have developed the many and various across the world vaccines and the positive results that this has produced after it has been given. Here in our own country, we continue not only to be gratefully 
thankful for all those working within our NHS and all their support workers. But we also give thanks to those other folk, freely giving their time and resources to bring compassion, food and help to those in need and suffering, despite uh, the desperate anxiety and loneliness. And while we recognise that our society will always have some people who use the current situation for their own means, we thank you, Lord, that there are so many more people who quietly and compassionately show care and goodness and love. And whilst those of faith can realise they actually reflect your love, God, many of those of no faith, may they come to realise too and find that faith in you, Lord. Lord God, we give thanks for the Hope Charity at St James, who are one of those groups who source and deliver food to so many to those in need locally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we bring before you and ask your help for those many millions of people who, as well as suffering from coronavirus, are among those who are also suffering from war, hunger, destruction and dictatorships. We also pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, who constantly persecute, who are constantly persecuted, abused and even killed because of their faith. We continue to thank you, Lord, for those many charitable organisations, such as Christian Aid, Children in Need, Open Doors and so many others, which offer support and help in difficult and dangerous circumstances across our world, as well as reflecting your love in all that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Lord God, we ask that you may influence and guide those in positions of authority and leadership and government across the world. And here in the UK, may they realise that they need to understand and implement the right, just and fair directions for those they are appointed to manage and lead so that every level of need in their societies may be addressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for those who are not with us today, but are known to us and who are ill or in some kind of need, and we bring them before you today. And I ask that they might feel your presence, your support, your love and our thoughts for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father God, we also bring before you those who have recently left this life and are now with you in peace. Please, Lord, comfort and hope, give comfort and hope to loved ones and to all who mourn for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please be with us and all that we bring before you in prayer, Lord God. And as we return day by day, please refresh us in your will and purposes for each of our lives. Please, Lord, forgive us for the times we stray off that narrow, well-beaten path in our journeys of faith. In your gracious mercy, Father God, please continue to draw each of us to your loving heart and blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord. So merciful Father, hear our prayers in the power of your Holy Spirit and in and through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you, and also with you. So let us sing our closing hymn, There is a Redeemer.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light in the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia.